Hey everyone, Anthony here again. You know this guy, maybe you know this guy. This is Ryan. He's been in a couple of my other videos. Um, we wanted to uh, do a new kind of conversation today or a new kind of um, series. Uh, this is going to be a monthly series, so you know I'm only going to do one of these a month. And that's what monthly means, I suppose. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the name of this series, as you can probably see from the title of the video, is the State of the Empire, which is a playoff State of the Union. There, the pun has been explained. I'm never doing it again. Uh, and the purpose behind this, this video set or this series is that once a month, uh, Ryan and I are going to get together and do a little discussion on just what's going on in Star Wars Legion, uh, whether it be uh, our experience playing the game or uh, news articles that Fantasy Flight has put out or, you know, future ideas on what we think is coming down the pipeline and how we'll interact with the current meta, uh, whatever it happens to be, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, and I, I don't think this will be a super long video, especially because we're still just utilizing what came out in the first release, you know, yeah. core set, wave one, that kind of thing. Uh, but I did want to do one, and, and I think we do have enough to talk about. It'll probably be a 10, 15 minute video. Yeah. That's my prediction. We'll see what it is when we're done. Uh, so, um, I guess, where, where would you like to start today? I don't know. I feel like last time we kind of digged into Legion, it was mostly talking about the core set and mm -hmm. what you had to do with the core set, which is, you know, uh, Luke Vader, two troopers, walker bikes. Yeah. Now we have had the opportunity to maybe use like three walkers in a list or okay. airspeed or ATST or just all infantry. Yeah, because we have a couple 800 point games under our belt now. Yeah. Uh, which has been my per I enjoy 800 points yeah. more than the smaller games. Yeah, so the one thing that I noticed immediately from going to a small game to a big game is that people like Luke and Vader uh, are a lot easier to ignore or get around, yep. especially with the objectives spread out so wildly. And it means that uh, kiting, uh, the act of shooting and running away simultaneously, mm -hmm. uh, is a lot more prominent and a lot yeah. easier to do. And flanking is a thing that can happen. Yeah, opening up that extra three feet of table is enormous for everything yeah. from where objective winds up being to the type of terrain you're using to how your units function. And then obviously your random deployment cards yeah. um, are huge now. Like mm -hmm. we played a game um, where I think it was massive offensive is the name yeah. of the deployment where you're basically taking one whole quarter of a table kind of thing uh, in opposite corners mm -hmm. and, and deploying that way. And that was really funky and I didn't yeah. hate it. But it was like, wow, I'm like halfway up the board already, yeah. I'll, I'll be it, you know, the wrong way up mm -hmm. the board kind of thing from you. Yeah. But I guess that's kind of the point. Uh, I really enjoyed that game, though. Yeah, what it does is it gives a denied flank because yeah. we push so far ahead, it means you can't get around yeah. on a certain side. There's this massive pivoting action yeah. that happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, the one thing I noticed is when I read on the forums, mm -hmm. uh, as a kind of aside, I play Rebels and I see rebel players complaining that the airspeeder is too expensive uh, or doesn't get the job done. And I feel like a lot of players are misusing it. The first time I used it, mm -hmm. I flew it fast and loose because I wanted to see how it functions on the table. Mm -hmm. um, and I decked it out with points. That's not the way to go. I just give it no upgrades whatsoever. And it gets the job done. And, and the thing is too, is I think that whether it's the airspeeder for the rebels or the ATST for the Imperials, um, I think people are using these units with the wrong mindset, mm -hmm. um, either because they have a certain expectation or visualization of how that unit's going to act uh, and perform, or um, it could even be coloring from different game systems that they yeah. before, where they say, well, this is my, my big vehicle, mm -hmm. and I expect it to act in this kind yeah. of way. But what I found, and I don't know what your experience has been with the airspeeder, but what I found with the ATST is I expect that the ATST is going to die, yep. because Everything wants to shoot it. Everyone says, oh, that thing's got to die. It's yeah. terrifying, right? But at the end of the day, part of the ATSD's role, part of its job is to soak fire. Yeah. It's like in that last game we played, mm -hmm. you killed it. Yeah. I wasn't upset by the fact that it died. I knew it was going to die. But the point was that it died during turn four. So, you know, over the halfway mark of the game. Mm -hmm. And it all the things that were shooting at the ATST were then not shooting at my squishier things. Yeah. And... It still managed to kill uh, an ATRT walker, a squad of rebels, and I can't. There was. I feel like there was. I don't it, know. It, but did, it, that, it did. And, it did a good and, job. And it got a shot off on the airspeeder yeah. before the airspeeder kind of, uh, you know, put it to sleep. Yeah, totally. And 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 realistically, 
I didn't really play all that complicated with it. I nope. think I, I moved it into some trees on turn one, yep. and then just literally shot. it just sat there and, and just kind of provided yep. fire the mm -hmm. whole game, right? What the what the ATST does is it gives you an anchor. Mm -hmm. So where there are several objectives, you stick it there, and because it is the grenade launcher, it says, yep. infantry, I dare you to come close to me. Yep. Because it will delete a unit of infantry turn yep. and just focuses all its guns. But keep in mind, the airspeeder is literally built to take out armor with its main cannon, which well, is the strongest single gun yeah, in the game. Yeah, and right this now. is the thing. I think that going into a game as a Rebel player, you have to say, this is the objective of my yes. airspeeder. Not that it's going to survive the whole game mm -hmm. because it's this tanky aircraft. It's like, no. Mm -hmm. When you really think about it, um, a airspeeder is like a slightly tankier version of of the Imperial speeder bikes. Yep. Both have white defense dice. Yep. Both come with cover one. Yep. Both have compulsory move. Mm -hmm. Both can surge to defense. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom line is that a unit of bikes will have six health combined and no armor mm -hmm. keyword, whereas yep. this ship has seven and armor keyword. If I could compare the AT or the uh, air speeder or something, it would be like a classic Lancer Knight. Mm. Yes. It's got, it's big, it's tanky, it hits hard, but if it gets bogged down, yeah. From the sides especially, like, it'll go down. It's main cannon is what yeah. you focus on. Don't give it a rear gun, in my experiences. Why waste, you know, extra 20 points sure. on a ground buzzer? And maybe get a second shot in when you can use your compulsory move to get in position. Aim and shoot. Right. Aiming and shooting with that big cannon in Impact 3 means that ATST is going down. Yep. Especially and, if you focus on... And that's basically what happened, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, like, at in the end, the ATST was taken out by the airspeeder. Mm -hmm. um, so the airspeeder kind of, I guess, accomplished its mission. Yep. And, then, and then after that, yeah. it was in such a position that the rest of my guys were able to focus yeah. fire on so, it. But, and that's what's going to do yeah. it is focus fire. Once it does its job, so for me, it's take out armor with mm -hmm. the airspeeder. And if there's some infantry out of position, mm -hmm. you know, aim and shoot. Maybe wipe out half the squad, throw some suppression on them, yeah. do its job. But if he's spending his time trying to take out the airspeeder, it gives my rebels a chance to move up. Mm -hmm. And because they have white dice, I pretend like I'm not rolling defense when I use them. Yeah. Um, but that's its own thing. The bottom line is what I've been discovering so far, having a lot more time to play with the rebels, is I think the rebels have a lot more firepower than I think people initially expected. Yeah, like that black dice are great. Yeah, and I think that the rebels might have, on average, better firepower than the Imperials. I feel like the Imperials have access to key items that have mm. amazing firepower, like yeah. the rocket launcher. Like, three black dice is great. But with, with Impact 3. With Impact 3. Yeah. Again, the Ion Cannon, two red dice. Impact uh, 1. But Empire Surge's offense, meaning those black dice will have two misses, I think. I think so. Yeah, two, something like that. I don't know uh, offhanded. No, three misses and then one surge. So yeah. they have a, quite a good chance of hitting. So I find the Rebels have, by and large, better firepower than the Imperials, but they mm -hmm. play more fast and loose. Their defense is abysmal yeah. walker uh, well, the atrt walker has a one in six chance yeah and armor. and you we were we had a conversation earlier where you kind of made a good point where it's like hey you know what if for whatever reason because you're trying to capture an objective mm -hmm. or because you know you just couldn't get to where you want to get to because suppression or something if a unit of stormtroopers is kind of caught with their pants down so to speak in the mm -hmm. open they're going to take some casualties yeah but the unit won't be wiped not unless you roll very poorly mm -hmm. or or your opponent has an above average roll or yep. something like that but like a unit of rebel it's very possible, especially if they don't have a dodge token, yeah. it's very possible that Rebels caught in the open could just get wiped on a good roll. Yep, and I totally yeah. expect it. Um, what I found is I don't put Rebels out in the open unless that's absolutely the only thing possible. Or if I have so many Rebels out in the open, it's like, sure, one will go down, but then you know the rest of the troops will push forward. Yeah. So that's been my experience with Rebels so far. Yeah. So um, there's one other – so I, I kind of have three things in mind that I yeah. want to kind of put on our plate for discussion. Uh, one more point about the game that we – the 800-point game that we most recently played. Uh, one about – basically the current meta and then i want to take a, a minute to talk about some of the new releases that are going to yeah. be coming out so the last point i want to make about the last game we played that i thought was very interesting is um okay so in this 800 point game that we played um i i won that game and i had vader and one stormtrooper left on the board that's it of my 800 points <laughs> what'd you have left on the board luke atrt three squads of rebels yeah like it was hilariously more damage was done yeah. to me i think i had like 500 plus points left yeah and to me and this is not about oh my 
this is not about, oh, I played super well or Ryan didn't play well. Mm -hmm. To me, what it highlighted is how much of a point the game makes of saying, you know, play your objectives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not that Ryan didn't play objectives. It's just that I was able to win that game yeah. because it didn't come down to just how many guys did Ryan kill. Yeah. And if it would have ended in a tie, objectively, yeah. then you would have won, obviously, because yeah. you killed way more. Um, and, and the circumstance was, it was just... You made a point a while back about, you know, there are so many opportunities in this game for it to be cinematic. Mm -hmm. And this was one of those times uh, we were playing. Is it – what's it called? Is it Retrieve the Supplies? Um, or Capture the capture Supplies? Capture the Supplies? The supplies. It's the one where your guy, your trooper units can pick stuff up and yeah. carry <laughs> your objectives, right? So um, five on the table, obviously. Mm -hmm. At near the end of the game, Ryan's holding two. Um, I'm holding three. He throws Luke at one of my units of stormtroopers and just butchers them with mm -hmm. his free attack, uh, causing my unit to drop that. And then Luke kind of runs behind cover so yep. as to not get pummeled, right? And so now it's tied. And like I said, if it would have ended as a tie, mm -hmm. and this is the last turn, if it ended as a tie, I was going to lose. Mm -hmm. I had happened to have that turn played uh, new ways to motivate them, which means that if a unit that's been issued a face-up order token... Um, activates then they can take a casualty in order to get a free action on their turn uh, and in that game type it costs an action to pick up those supplies mm -hmm. so i had a squad of five stormtroopers uh, or it might have been four at that point. Yeah. And uh, Vader basically, you know, said, you better get it done, strangled one guy to death. So I was yeah. down to three. Those three guys then were able to move, move, be touching that objective, pick it up for free, and all of a sudden I've got three objectives again. Mm -hmm. And after that, it, it obviously came down to some luck. It was just yeah. about those stormtroopers weathering... Two different shots, one from an ATRT and one from a squad of rebels. Uh, ATRT and two squads of rebels. Right, that's but they my were, dog. But they, if you just but they weren't heavy cover. They weren't heavy cover. Yeah, yeah that was obviously the, a massive part of the saving yeah. grace. And it's one of those moments where, um, yes, it is a dice game, mm -hmm. and luck is involved. Obviously, it yeah. could have gone either way. Yeah, but the point was, Anthony had an opportunity, a tactical opportunity that was permitted to him through the game yes yeah that had very cinematic very flavorful qualities mm -hmm. to it that netted him the win and whether i won or lost i was like man that was a great game yeah yeah it was it it, it kind of was one of those things where it's like there was a win that got eked out but it was so it so could have easily just gone yeah. the other way just mm -hmm. based on yeah. if i had rolled mm -hmm. worse defense dice yeah. than i did and so far so far in legion i haven't felt that too much in one yeah. direction thing. No, I've never played a game of Legion where I felt that I was cheated out of a win or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, and where like the rules were abused yeah. or that, you know, something that happened just didn't seem to make sense mm -hmm. to me. It just, it always seems to flow well. Yeah. And you know what? Part of that might be because it's so early and everyone has access to, to like, the same stuff. Yeah. Basically. Because by like basically a rebel trooper and an imperial trooper are so close to being the same. I think there's yeah. like a 12% bonus to hit that a rebel has mm -hmm. and like a 20 percent chance to not get hit that the stormtrooper has and like they're so close to being the same mm -hmm. that it's not that different no. the rebels have a little bit more punch the empire has a little bit more defense staying yeah. power and it's like okay that makes sense yeah so maybe because things are so similar that's why the game seems so um, evenly matched i don't know what'll happen once the uh, fleet troopers, Leia and Veers and the snow troopers come out. Yes, that's going to, and we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, and, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of bring up this interesting, like showcase that was, Hey, you know, your object, it's not just a game of, we bring our armies and we smash, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It is a yep. game of, you are here to get a job done. Yes. And, and in a lot of cases, I think realistically in every case, casualties <laughs> won't matter insofar as unless it's a tie. No. Because every single game type is about capture this, be there at this yeah. time, be here at the end of the game, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. No, I know there are two games where we played where by the end it's like, well, I've got almost double the points left of stuff and you just managed to get the objective. Eke out that yeah. objective. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, well, good job. Yeah. I tried preventing Which, you. And the thing that's kind of funny, I guess if there's, a, if there's a reverse cinematic quality to it, is that I keep being the person who's just eking it out. Yeah. But like theoretically, it should be like, oh, well, the Empire has crushed the Rebels, but the no. Rebels' heroic sacrifice 
Choice has won the day. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's because I play New Republic, mm. and you're playing the good Imperial guys. Remnant. Yeah, we're no, we're the good guys. Yeah. We're we're playing uh, the Law and Order, and you know, crime is yeah. everywhere, and crime is everywhere. That's right. Yeah, because so. usually I end up having more stuff on the table, more yes. guys. Um, I like to run my rebels, no Z sixes, no ion cannons. Mm. I like to run uh, squatter rebels with the fifth guy mm -hmm. that's it yeah and i don't like to run speeder bikes um mm -hmm. because i personally find them to be too squishy yeah. for the point investment i like to run lots of stormtroopers vader and an atst yeah. for some armor uh, maybe two once beers come out but like i said yeah. we'll get to that shortly so and it's funny that you bring that up actually because that's the second thing that i wanted to talk about um that still had to do with the current meta is a big question that's been in my mind is what is better i mean not that one just definitely outranks the other, but uh, I don't know whether it's a playstyle thing or, you know, maybe we'll say what's more optimal at this point mm -hmm. in the game. Is it to take minimum count squads, but then lots of squads, yeah. or to take fewer squads, but have the squads you do take have all the toys, you know, the extra man, the heavy weapon, the gear slot, whatever. I tend to play the latter. Ryan tends to play the former. Mm -hmm. And there's been a couple other games that other players in our community have played where there's that same dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And I'm always watching to see what seems to be getting more bang for buck. Is it mm -hmm. to have more sources of fire yeah. with less dice and less rerolls and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Or fewer sources of fire, but like, you know, can theoretically take more hits because there's the mm -hmm. extra guy and yeah. all that kind of thing. And you know what's kind of funny is, and this just goes to show how balanced it is, at least in our meta, mm -hmm. is... You and I, with a combination of being veteran war gamers, yes. uh, are currently arguably the top players in town. Mm -hmm. We had a little tournament thing, and the two of us had the uh, same amount of wins uh, going into it, undefeated. We didn't face each other because we didn't get to round four. Yeah. Um, but as a whole, the two of us are, are kind of the, uh, the great whites in, in the waters. Mm -hmm. One of us plays Rebels, one of us plays Empire. Yeah. One of us plays fully decked out upgrades, one of us tends to go minimum with more guys. Mm -hmm. Yet we're both at the same level. Yeah. Both work. Both are fine. Yeah, it's not like one of us just steamrolls the other consistently no. or something because of the play yeah. style. And, and what it means, too, is you could say, oh, we're both the top players and we both run the same type of armies. We don't. We both are the total opposite in terms of play style. Yeah. So yeah. I think that goes to show, again, that balance. No, absolutely. And then maybe that is ultimately the answer to my question. Maybe it's the it's that it doesn't matter and that it's just a matter of whatever you find to be more towards the way that you play the game. Whatever you find works for you best. Yeah. Um, so uh, we kind of we have time for one more topic that we're going to discuss, uh, which is the uh, the new releases that are coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so there are four releases that should be coming out. And the interesting thing is we don't know if just the Rebels are going to or sorry, just the Imperials are going to to drop at end of april with the rebels being slightly after or if mm -hmm. they're all going to come at the same time uh what is on fantasy flight's website kind of seems to suggest that just the imperials will be dropping yeah but we'll find out um so veers mm -hmm. what are your thoughts uh he's definitely really intimidating i can guess we'll see a lot of veers double atst lists mm -hmm. especially Probably. because he's got some buster vehicles he yep. can throw aim tokens down and dodges and dodges and the ability to ditch crits with that yep. Um, you know, especially the fact that he's a pretty accurate guy himself. He's got a mo or a super E11, so you can throw three white dice, reroll all three. Yeah. Uh, he's cheap. He's cheap, and that's yeah. what scares me. Is because 80, 80 points compared to 200 yeah. base. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what scares me, too, is I see Veers, two ATSTs, and a lot of snowtroopers, because snowtroopers are a yeah. point cheaper. Yeah. And the ability to move, move, shoot... Mm -hmm. Uh, means that I think a Veers list is going to be that steamroller list. Yeah. Like, it's the whole thing consistently moves forward. Lots of infantry supported by armor. Yeah. If you thought 11 hit points needing crits to damage on an ATS team is a lot to shoot through, now you need 22. So <laughs> it's, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. The, the I, You know, here's the thing. I've done, a, I've done more thinking on Veers, and we know more about Veers or theoretically we do um than the snow troopers and so with with veers i he'll be the new shiny thing i'm gonna get him i'm gonna play a lot of games with him when it starts and see how he shakes out for me the one thing though that really still makes me feel like i might take vader over veers is the idea that when vader's there your troops can never <coughs> run mm -hmm. when vader's there your stormtroopers are just like like I've, I often make that joke where it's like, oh my god, we're getting pummeled. Should we run? And all they hear is, 
<laughs> no, he's right there. Just stay yeah. where you are, you know? And I think that's one thing a lot of Imperials don't realize, too, is when I've played Rebel v. Rebel Mirror matches, um, because I run so many units, I throw out a lot of suppression. I've broken units. I've made units run off the table in Rebel, yeah. Rebel v. Rebel, and Imperials have yet to feel that need to, to kind of run away because Vader usually survives the whole game. Yeah. Um, I think when Veer shows up, despite his ability to take off suppression with his inspire mm -hmm. i think we're going to see some imperial players players struggle with that routing because veers isn't going to be up and, in people's faces and veers only has a courage of two mm -hmm. whereas vader doesn't care about suppression yeah. at all so it's and like, luke has a courage of three so even the yeah. rebel players are used to a higher morale that's break. right yeah because leia is in the same boat right she's, she's courage two, two. yeah um and both of them have their own unique tricks i'm not saying by any means that you know veers is totally unsurvivable in comparison to vader that kind of thing there's lots of little like the guardian trick yeah. like that's obviously huge for keeping them alive yeah. um but for me, the more interesting thing is the snowtroopers, and I'm really interested to see if I don't think they'll make stormtroopers obsolete at all. No. But I think that it's interesting that they can basically go what's the equivalent of a range three mm -hmm. ruler or a bit more yeah. than that because of the base size, and then still shoot. Mm -hmm. And if you are taking Veers, then Veers is giving out aim tokens, yep. so they're effectively, you know, aiming, moving, moving, shooting. Mm -hmm. And if you're equipping them with flamethrowers, yeah. which I think a lot of people will yes. just because of fleet troopers, which I'll, yeah. I'm going to kind of give you the mic on that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but fleet troopers want to be close to you. Flamethrowers want to be close to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and flamethrowers are brutal. It's whoever shoots first. Well, point. even still, it's kind of like that's – to me, that's why I have the ideology of deck your troops out. Yeah. Because if those fleet troopers get in, and let's say they kill five of my six-man – or six of my uh, – four of my six-man squad, then the leader and the flame trooper are left. Yeah. And even if they're suppressed and they get one action, then they can still move and fire for free, yeah. and that flamethrower is going to get to activate. Now, it, are fleet troopers still surge hit, like storm troopers? Because oh, you mean uh, snow troopers? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, because yeah. fleet troopers are different. They're surge hit, surge defense. Oh, they get both. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Which is neat. They, they kind of need it, though. Uh, with the defense especially. Uh, yeah, because they the, want to be close, Yeah, right? but the one thing I see with the snowtroopers is they get the flamethrower. They get the ion cannon as well, mm -hmm. which I don't know if we'll see a lot of Empire players use. We might because, the you know, getting hit mm -hmm. with uh, – get having your airspeeder hit with two ion tokens is pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, the one thing is I can see though is will stormtroopers become obsolete? No, because – the ability to gain extra rerolls and take a DLT means you can yeah. have a minimum squad of stormtroopers with a DLT. Yeah, sit back at aim range and shoot. four. Yeah, aim exactly. and shoot with scopes. No, absolutely. And um, I think and that hold objectives in the back. That's right, and that's why to me the key difference. And I had a conversation with this with another local imperial player. Um, and the idea is that what differentiates is the heavy weapons. You know, they can take completely different heavy mm -hmm. weapons. And that DLT is just, like you said, you take your five dudes. One of them has uh, the DLT or DTL mm -hmm. or whatever the hell yeah. it's called. And they sit back and they just pour on fire and suppression and yeah. it's red dice and it has impact one. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, whereas snowtroopers don't have access yeah. to that. But this is another reason why I love the idea of playing snowtroopers with Vader. I just basically, if we're being honest with ourselves, I'm basing all my guys for crate, but I'm really just building the Hoth invasion force. Mm -hmm. And Vader, with that force pull, is like Vader goes free dodge, mm -hmm. move, move. I pull you closer to me. Flame now the stormtroopers move, <coughs> rather aim, move, yeah. free attack action. Yeah. And just flame, and it's just going to be really cool mm -hmm. to try and do that. You know, I wonder if you'll end up doing Veer's Vader, no ATSTs, tons of Stormtroopers. You know what? I don't hate that idea, right? No. <laughs> because Veer's that is idea. giving out eight tones. He's like, who cares about Veer's' morale? Yeah, when that's going on, and there are a lot of command cards. Can command here? I, I'm sure that they can't. I'm just I don't remember off the top of my head. Can commanders use other commanders' leadership? Like, will Vader cause Veer's to not be able to run? I think. As long as he's within the bubble, why, why wouldn't he? Very interesting. Yeah. Well, because I don't know if in the rule book it no. says that other units can yeah. use a, a and, commander. And then you know what's great about running two commanders? You can start mixing your command deck. Yes, absolutely true. And you don't run vehicles, Kate. Okay, don't take Veers' vehicle one. Mm. Take his other ones, though. Yeah. Because I'm seriously considering running Luke and Leia because Leia frees up Luke having to stay with the troops, and Luke can go hunting for stormtroopers This is now, true. Yeah. Which is what he excels he at. He does excel at that. Uh, you know, wipe out a squad in one turn okay. is and something that can happen. And so what are your thoughts on... Fleet Troopers. So when I build my squads in this game, I run four minimum squads of mm -hmm. um, 
rebel troopers with the fifth guy. The reason I do that is because this is an objective game. I want to grab objectives. Why am I going to spend points on a unit to do things that is irrelevant to capturing objectives? Mm -hmm. They don't need a Z6 to hold an objective. Mm -hmm. They don't need grenades to hold an objective. Those black dice means that they can sit in the objective. They don't need to aim. They can dodge and throw suppression at the enemy trying to come towards them to slow mm -hmm. them down and hold that objective as long as possible. Yeah. They get hit, take a suppression. Sure, cool. They're not... They're still holding the objective, they're still doing their job, and I save points. Those points I can spend on things to stop the enemy from grabbing objectives, yeah. like fleet troopers. Yeah, those fleet now, troopers are going to be real objective toadies huge. because of that standby thing. I don't, that's not how I plan on running. Oh, okay. No, because everyone's thinking standby, range two, sit back, hold an objective. Mm, you get six guys. One of them will... I don't know what the grenade launcher does yet, because mm -hmm. it's a That's little That's true, obscure. they haven't really yet. It has blast and impact something, mm -hmm. and it throws dice. And I don't know yeah. what kind. I'm assuming, like, two black dice. And it's either range 1 to 2 or 1 to 3. I don't know. If it's 1 to 3, that's awesome. But so far, the shotgun's looking like what I'd prefer. So what I see them is, is because they have uh, surge hit, five guys get 10 white dice with a 3 and 8 chance of hitting. Mm -hmm. The shotgun has a uh, seven, 7 of 8 chance of hitting, mm. and Pierce 1. So this squad is going to be booking it towards the objective, getting in real close, and gunning guys So you're going to use them as Vanguard. I'm using them as Shock Troopers, okay. basically. Okay, yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, because get, throwing those dice is a huge deal, and they can go grab the objective mm -hmm. and then stand by and hold it. Yeah. So that's, that's how I see them, as the guys who are storming the trenches. Because... The uh, other troopers have range three, so they can sit back, hold objectives, and throw fire from far away. Yeah. If I had access to a range four gun on my troopers, mm -hmm. I would probably give them that, but we don't have access to that yet, which is where um, saboteurs or commandos come in later on, which yes. is another thing I'm very yeah. excited for. Yeah, no, the, the Han the Han and commandos release is going to be really neat. Do yeah. you see yourself favoring Han over your other commanders? Han and Leia is what I'm probably going to be yeah. using down the road. Um, the other thing about Leia getting into her is... What's Han? A buck 20? Uh, yeah, 120. Yeah, okay. But he can you know, throw four red dice a turn. Yeah, with, with Pierce, Pierce 2, ugh. I think Marksman 2, uh, and he has the ability, uh, sorry about the mess, which oh. is a zero pip card that gives him an aim and a dodge token. He's yeah. luck 3, so he can reroll 3 defense He's dice. a cheeky monkey. He's going to be a yeah. lot of fun. Uh, but what I like about Leia so far is when I talk about these kind of shock and awe tactics as mm -hmm. Rebels, Rebels being caught in the open sucks. They'll get mowed down. Mm -hmm. Leia has access to orbital bombardment, which will suppress a whole bunch of units. That's when you can push forward. Yeah. She also has a card that says uh, units that are issued orders do a speed one maneuver. Yeah, that's so, that's very neat. So yeah. I will have access to that move, move, shoot. Yeah. So Leia, the commandos actually have a vanguard too, yeah. right? Like that could be an interesting mm -hmm. thing. Too. So Leia is presenting a lot of abilities for offensive pushing, yeah. a lot of shock trooper abilities, and she can keep the guys pushing forward alive by giving dodge tokens to those fleet troopers. Yeah. And by removing suppression from them to keep yeah. them rolling. Which so. brings us to the last thing that I want to talk about, which is really just a, some quick speculation, is we have yet to hear what the next <laughs> Imperial commander and unit will be. I think it's Boba. Yeah. So and I think we're going to get Arsenal too. Yeah. And he's going to have a gun, a flamethrower, and a rocket. Yeah. Um, I think he might have something... Um, so if you look at Leia, or Luke and Vader, uh, Veer's... And Leia, they're similar. Han is a shooting hero mm -hmm. uh, who is a offensive shooting hero, like a Luke Vader except more uh, infantry style. Yeah. I think that it'll be Boba. He'll have jump two and move three. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the, the, there's two schools of thoughts on this. People either believe that it's going to be kind of a, a, a Boba Fett with, you know, uh, unmounted scout troopers with sniper rifles, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, which would be cool. I'd be fine with that. The other school of thought is that it will perhaps be Director Krennic and Death Troopers. Um, that's what I really want. That's what I'm hoping for a lot because I, I love – I think a model, I think a mini for Krennic would look awesome. Mm -hmm. Just the whole white uniform and yeah. cape and everything would look boss. Um, I love Death Troopers. I love the idea of Death Troopers. I think those would be cool miniatures as well. They would be so distinct from the all-white – Mm -hmm. You know, well, I mean, I know some people have taken liberties with their stormtroopers, you know, whatever, but, but I think they would look super nice. And, um, here's the thing. 
when I talk about the Boba piece is that traditionally, yes, whenever Fantasy Flight releases Han Solo, they seem to release Boba Fett right alongside, yep. right? For, I guess, thematic reasons and what have you. <clears throat> but the other thing is, is I it just feels to me like it's so early in the game to put out a unit leader that isn't technically an Imperial. Okay, so let me get to that. If you look at Empire Strikes Back, mm -hmm. Boba orders some stormtroopers around. Like, he has authority over them, right? When he's saying, put them on board. Okay, okay. And so he has some authority because he's a hired bounty hunter. And so they're... He, the stormtroopers are probably told if this guy's doing something, mm -hmm. you know, follow his lead because yeah. this guy has charge. Yeah, no, that's that's for sure. And, and again, I'm not ruling it out. It's just like I just feel like it would be more thematic to have an actual imperial officer. Um, and I mean, and other options that it could be that I'm not maybe less likely to be, but that it yeah. could be is like there's Governor Price from Rebels. She's often seen on the ground with her troops. I think you'll see counterparts done. Yeah, so no. Price will and be done with like Hera or some. Yeah, other some other thing. Yeah, that. yeah. There's my dog again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that's pretty good. So I know, like, I know there's a couple different topics that we could mm -hmm. go into a little bit more in depth. But just keeping in mind that uh, you know we originally thought maybe this video yeah. would be 15 minutes, and we've, we've effectively doubled that. You know, and I think Death Troopers will come out. To mirror when they'll come out. Yeah. Okay. I think you'll see Chewie and Wookies, mm -hmm. and then someone in Death Troopers, because Wookies and Death Troopers are those heavy infantry. I mean, I guess so, but at the same time, if you're talking about companion releases, mm -hmm. if if it wasn't going to be now, I think you're more likely to see something like Director Krennic with Death Troopers and Saw Gerrera with like the extremist rebels. I could see that being yeah, more of a, of a that, matchup. That you makes know? sense. Um, but we'll we'll see. I I'm I'm not a rebel player. I could be persuaded to play Rebels if they release Saw Gerrera and, like, yeah. Extremist. Like, and I will go full space terrorist. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun to do that. Yeah. So, But anyway, so that's – I guess that will conclude our, our first conversation for State of the Empire. And we'll see you next month with another update. And hopefully by that time, I'm sure – we will have gotten our, our sneak peek preview from Fantasy Flight Games on what that Imperial Commander is going to be. Yeah, and at least a couple games of years mm -hmm. and maybe like Feel free to place bets in the comments as to what it will be and we'll have no prize whatsoever for whoever wins. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.